Hello and welcome to the third event of the 2018 Formula 4 Southeast Asia Championship. My name is Aaron Thompson and I'm joined now by Sandy Stuvik, F4 driver coach. Hi, I'm Sandy Stuvik, looking forward to the second race. Thanks Sandy, and as he said, we're just about to get into the second race, but before then, let's have a quick walk down the pit lane, see if we can find anyone to talk to. Hopefully, I'll try to. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I started second, nothing much happened and finished second. But before we get to the race start, everyone's got to take their positions and let's run through the starting grid. So as I said before, it is a reverse grid of the finishing positions from race one, which means that Rio Comicado is in pole position, followed by Alistair Young, Luke Thompson, Moise Mushafa, Aidan Wright, Antoine Party, Kane Shepard, and Alessandro Giretti. So of course this means the two race leaders or the race winners from the last race are at the back of the grid, so they're going to be diving down, trying to get back to the front as soon as possible. And we spoke to Kane just now, and he said, yeah, he thinks he can get on the podium, and he's going to try and make a move through turn three, turn four. The lights are out, and we're underway. Great start off the line by Alistair, and the pink car, number 42, that's Luke Thompson as well. Great start, comes up the middle. Is Luke going to get into first off the start? Not quite, he's trying to go around the outside. Moves with Jaffer, and this contact he spun. No, not quite. He managed to keep it going, keeping a straight line, returning to the track. But oh no, that's it's Antoine like Potti from Belgium in the car number 66 has stalled on the grid. So the marshals there are pushing the car back. We're not quite sure what's going to happen. Are they going to just continue racing? Will the car be cleared in time or are they going to have to call out a safety car? Well, oh, it looks like that Antoine is about to get the car started, so he might be allowed to race the track of the grid. Perhaps not. No, they've moved him off our screens, we can't see him anymore. But we can see there at the front of the grid now is that number 22, Alistair Young, followed by Luke Thompson and Rio Kumikado in the pink car just behind. Okay, and we've seen on our screens now, Anton Potti has been brought back into the pit lane. Hopefully he'll be able to rejoin at the end of the grid. So Alistair there leading us through, I believe that's turn nine. Coming down, Duretti. Duretti's up at the fourth position, making a move on Rio Kumikado. Kane Shepard is just behind him as well, so we've missed a lot of action as Rio goes really wide. And there's Anton returning to the grid. That was a nice pass from Alessandro Giretti there. And Kane Shepard as well, right up behind him, not going to let him get away. So now they've just got two more drivers. That's uh, the 42 car, that's Luke Thompson in the yellow car ahead of him, that's Alistair Young. And where is Moise Mishafer in all of this? He went off briefly, so what, does that, what position has that put him in? now and they're all crossing the line and your leader is Alistair Young followed by Luke Thompson then Alessandro Giretti, Kane Shepard, Aiden Wright just behind. Looks like the cars are really oversteering in these hot conditions so it'll be important. Oh a move there the by Giretti on Thompson and Kane on uh, right as well. Alistair Young there taking us through turn three now in a moment on the right of your screens you're going to see what's happened. Luke Thompson's managed to maintain the position ahead of Giretti. Aiden Wright is right up behind Kane. Look at those four cars. Just an attempt between all of them. Coming down now into turn four. Of course, this means that Alistair is going to be able to pull out a little bit of a lead. You can see he's moving away from Luke a little bit as Luke's slowing up uh, the faster car of Giretti and Kane behind him. So this is where we might see some side-by-side -side action into turn seven or one of the big U-turns. Yes, we might. Now it looks like he's setting up an overtake in turn eight if he can get close enough, but doesn't look like he can this lap. So we can see there, Moise Mushafa, that's him in the piece seven and right behind there, that's Rio Kamikado. And Tuan Party has also rejoined the race. So this is Alistair Young now leading us down through turn ten, the big sweeping left hand to U turn before coming over the bridge. And in second position, it's still Luke Thompson, Giretti right behind him, and Kane right behind him. So is anything going to happen here now, coming down into turn one, turn two? We know from the last event, turn two is pretty successful for overtaking opportunities, and Luke has been incredibly unlucky at turn two in the last race. But with 13 laps to go, it's Alistair Young still leading. Giretti there, a little bit wobbly coming through turn one. Ooh, oh, Kane very wide by Kane. Oh, and there's oh, been a spin. A That's spin. Moise Mushafa's spin. But Managed he's rejoined. Rio Kamikado might be able to take advantage of that spin and come back. 
gain a position. But Alistair still up at the front. Luke does seem to be closing in on Alistair. Perhaps because uh, Kane is back up a little bit from um, from Moretti. Oh, they're right neck and neck now. Where's he going to go? Is he going to try and hold off and make a move at turn eight? Coming through turn seven now. Oh, oh! oh. <laughs> side by side through turn seven. That's brilliant. Oh, oh Luke, very no wide. Oh, it, no. no oh, there. oh, he's hit. oh, that's uh, some like he's got damage. some damage there. Oh, I can't tell, but it does look like something got bent. He was definitely there. Now you can see he's letting Muiz go past. Here we have a quick replay of the action. Alessandro Duretti around the inside of turn seven. Luke yeah. just, he's on the outside line, just loses grip. There's no grip there. No, uh, off the racing line here, the track is very, very slippery. So as soon as the drivers go for a move, they've got to get back onto the racing line. Otherwise, they're just going to go wide like we've seen a few times this race already. Oh, Alessandro closing in there a lot. Uh, he's got a faster entrance. Than but with uh, 12 laps to go now, I believe, Alistair Young is still in the lead, followed by Alessandro Giretti, Kane Shepard, and then Aidan Wright. Looks like he's going to make a move into turn two. He carries a lot more speed through turn one, huh? Yep. There we go, nicely up the inside into turn two. And can Kane Shepard try and do something up the inside Ooh. into turn three? Has a look. Yeah, he does like it, he pulls it, it off. Beautiful driving. Oh, and Aiden Wright as well. Oh, not quite. Almost manages to get past the Malaysian in front of him. Now Dreffy out in front where he wants to be, and of course Kane Shepard behind him. So we've got to see now, can the Thai driver track down the, uh, the Frenchman in front of him? Aiden Wright there following behind Alistair Young coming into turn six and the big sweeping right hand U-turn where we saw a beautiful inside uh, overtake by Alessandro Giretti last lap. Can we see Luke Thompson? Is he still out there? There's Muiz just behind. And Luke. Yeah, I think that's yep. Luke's pink car and another pink car behind him. So everybody is still intact and racing. He's coming there now through turn nine. Down the back straight. We've got Duretti taking us now through turn 10. Aiden Wright applying pressure to Alistair Young. So what's Kane's answer going to be here? How can he... I mean, you've obviously had a look at the data, Sandy. Where can Kane find a few seconds or a few tenths even on Duretti? Well, the Alistair, main... Alistair in there and Aiden right side by side. Looking like he's going to set up into turn two if he can. He's very close down the straight now. Aiden Wright coming along the outside. Outside through turn one. No, but he set himself up for an overtake through turn two. Going to get the undercut into turn two. Very, Very nice. nice. But Alistair now is in a better position for turn three. Can he can he take it back? No, not quite. He moves to the outside line. It was good driving for Alistair to hold on to his lead for so long with more experienced drivers ahead of him. Aiden now is taking the lead, obviously, and just behind Alistair now, he's going to have to start worrying about Muiz Mashaf. And Muiz, we know, is a very fast driver. He just had some bad luck in the previous race, had a little spin, but now he's got to get back. He's got to get back on the podium. We see Alessandro Duretti there taking us through turn seven. A little bit wide, a little bit on the curb into turn six there, though. Well, it looks like he's loving these hot and slippery conditions. Uh, the top two are just flying away from the pack at the moment even though lap times look to be at least a second slower than they were in race one. Here is Aiden Wright leading us down, and Moise Mushafra has gained a lot of time on Alistair Young. He's going to be making a move in the next few laps. It's a little bump in the track there. Yeah, this track looks quite bumpy. It's a new, new challenge for the drivers after the super smooth Sepang circuit. Now this is turn 10, turn 11 there, over the bridge they go, and now back down the back straight, the final corner, and Duretti takes us across the line with 10 laps to go, right behind him, Kane Shepard. So we can see Kane is actually 8 tenths behind Duretti as they cross the line, and uh, Kane is, uh, sorry, Duretti is doing a 139, and Kane is doing a 140.327, so it's about 6 tenths uh, difference in lap time. 
and interestingly as well, Al uh, Alessandro Giretti also has the fastest lap of the race and that was the last lap that he said as well, that's a 139.797. So as you said, uh, Alessandro is flying at the head of the pack and oh here we go, Maurice Michafa is going to make a move. And up the inside, very nice. Looks like Alistair opened the door for him there. Coming back down through the back straight, over the bridge again. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong corner, where am I? <laughs> sorry, that's turn seven there, actually. And now we can see Alessandro Giretti and Kane Shepard coming down. That looks like to be turn coming into turn 10. Or is that turn eight? turn eight there. So here's Aiden and Moise and Alistair just behind and Luke Thompson, he's going to want to try and do something, try and catch back up. Very lucky to have not damaged his, co his car when he went off the course a few minutes ago. Yep. At the back there, that is Luke again following through, trying to catch up to Alistair. We can see Aiden right on our screens now. Coming through turn 10, up through 11 and over the bridge. We can see there Giretti crossing the line with nine laps to go. And with nine laps to go, that's Giretti in the lead with uh, second place Kane Shepard. Third place is, I believe, Aidan Wright. Fourth is Alistair Young. Well, fourth is now Maurice Mushiapa. We saw that overtaken. Fifth is Alistair Young. So that puts Luke in uh, P5 and Rio in P7 and Antoine Party in P8 been a good race so far with quite a lot of overtaking, especially with the two faster drivers starting from the back. Is it flat out there through that kink in the in the in track? Yes, yes, the drivers take that those corners flat out in the approach to turn four, which Aiden Wright is entering now. So we can see Giretti just seemed to have a, a substantial lead, he seems to be widening his lead and lead from Kane just behind him. Uh, any idea what he's doing differently? Because he's still, if I'm not mistaken, he's still the only person to break into the 137s. No, Kane Shepard did a 137.969 in the last race. Yeah, uh, Alessandro has a strength in breaking, so he's breaking very, very late and using that to his advantage on this circuit. So what does Kane need to do to improve? He needs to break later or harder? Or? Yeah, basically just breaking later, uh, minimizing the loss that he has right now to Alessandro in the brakes. But uh, Kane has very good exits, so he has to find the balance and what kind of trade-off he wants to make. But I think where he is now, he should definitely try to jump a bit later onto the brakes, see if he can close the gap to Alessandro. And with eight laps to go, it's still Giretti, Shepard, and Wright. One, two, three, and Moise Mashafa. Moise Mashafa does seem to be catching up a little bit to the driver right ahead of him. And Luke Thompson, just ahead of Alistair Young, just came across in front of us at the start finish line. And then we see Rio Comicado coming across the finish line as well. So Giretti here now taking us up through the kink just ahead of Kane. The last lap, yep, as we said, Giretti does seem to be pulling out a gap. He's about uh, 1.2 seconds ahead now, it's about four tenths up from the last lap. Yeah, the first two have pulled out a massive lead already over the pack. To see if Aiden Wright can close the gap or not. A little bit further back down the grid, I'm interested to see what happens with uh, Anton Potti and Rio Comicado and Alistair Young. As we know, uh, Antron, he finished up on the podium in the last race. And we've seen before that he, he, he's maybe a little bit slow at the beginning of the weekend, but as things get on, he's always managed to get onto the podium. And uh, indeed, that's what happened at the last event, and he ended up being second overall. Yeah, that's the important part, is to keep improving with these cars, and Antoine is still very new to these cars, new to this championship, and certainly new to this track. So to see his progression and improvement is very good. You can see the car is going very wide there, but there's not a white line, so is that, is that allowed? Is there a rule or...? Well, there's no white line, so technically that is still part of the circuit. The drivers are not uh, breaking any of the laws, so it all seems fair and legal, and they all seem to be doing it, so nobody is gaining an unfair advantage. A lot of wheel movement there, you can see from Alessandro. Is it you have to fight your whole way through the corner, or...? I think that's a characteristic of the track. The track's quite bumpy, especially in turn one, so you'll see the drivers fighting the car, trying to keep it on the racing line. 
So you told us before, Sandy, that they just reach uh, sixth gear at the end of the start finish straight. So do they hold sixth through turn one? No, I down believe they down to fifth for turn one. And then down to what, third at the second yes, corner? Yes, down to third and Stay also third, third again for turn three. Flat out through the kink. Then in fourth in turn four, down to third for turn five. And then also fourth again for turn seven. You can see there on our screens, this is the back half of the grid that looks like Aiden Wright in number seven, just ahead of Moise Machaffer. And Moise is close right up on Aiden, he's right beside him. He's going to look to make a move any moment now, but Moise, I think, maybe just needs to calm down a little bit and choose his opportunities a little bit, a little bit better. Yeah, well, we've seen twice now in the start where he's made uh, some mistakes, some spins that have put him to the back of the grid. And although he's shown great pace driving back up through the field, uh, those losses in the beginning are just too much right now to grant him a podium. We saw something similar in the last event. Uh, Moise had, he had the pace, he was up there, he was matching the pace with Alessandro and Kane, driving brilliantly. He made some amazing overtake opportunities, but he just couldn't hold the line. In the first race, the second race, the same thing happened. He tried an overtake, but he just couldn't couldn't hold on to it but in the third race he calmed down and as soon as he calmed down he was p1 yeah yeah i think that's crucial so coming down now we can see luke thompson just behind Moise mushaffer and behind them i think that's alistair young and now you can see kane shepherd on your screens taking us through the kink just behind alessandro Giretti in the car number 28 the front of the field now coming down Kane is too far back to do anything. He's at the last lap. He's 1.5 seconds, uh, 1.5 seconds from the leader, which means he's fallen behind another three tenths. And Giretti uh, in the last lap set a 138.7. In the last lap, uh, Kane was doing a 139 dead. Yeah, it looks like Alessandro is managing to pull out about three tenths a lap on Kane. So for both of these drivers are driving very, very well. Coming down now, I believe that's turn eight. Kane Shepard taking us through just behind Giretti. They're going to come up back outside, down through turn nine. What speed do you reach here at the end of this corner? You're going to be up into fifth gear? Yeah, up into fifth gear, probably hitting around 180 kilometers per hour, seeing as turn nine is just a fast sweeping left hander. But then it's a hard braking down to third or second gear, depending on the driver's preference for turn 10. So we can see now Giretti in the 28 car coming around the final corner. Oh, oh, oh like very, very wide there. Oh, that's going to change things. Kane's going to use that to his advantage. Crossing the line, that meant that Kane is, uh, well, he's gained three tenths there. Not enough to put him in the lead, but it's the start of it. Is that going to affect uh, Giretti's tires or anything? Well, right now, they look like they're lapping quite consistently when they don't make any mistakes. So both of these drivers driving very smart, keeping their tires because they still have a whole other race to do. So we, we were talking before that uh, Alessandro just breaks a lot later than Kane and that's why he's getting a, a, an advantage in the times. And is that what happened uh, there? He was pushing the limits of uh, the braking distance and just went a little bit too far? Yeah, probably. He's always searching for those extra attempts and that's crucial in a race but can also be quite risky as we just saw. But it looks like he hasn't lost too much time. Uh, the gap seems to be quite similar to how it was last lap. So we can see them now bringing us down into turn nine. And we're going to come through turn nine, of course, with Giretti still in the lead. Followed by Kane Shepard. And you can see that they have built a fantastic gap to the drivers behind him. It's almost 12 seconds down to Australia's Aiden Wright. Oh, I'm sorry. That looks like Mui's Mushafa is in third. What's happened to Aiden Wright? Looks like he's coming to the pits. Looks like. So that means Mui's Mishafa are on the podium. And behind him we have Luke Thompson. And then Alistair Young and Rio Kamikado. Coming around the final corner now once again. It's Alessandro Giretti in the blue number 28 car. Coming all the way from France. Down in India this weekend. Continuing his winning streak. And we have four laps to go as you just saw on the Marshalls board four laps so what can Kane do Kane has knocked off another two tenths on that lap four laps to go two tenths a lap yeah he's gonna be right up his rear on the last two laps could be if he keeps up this pace he could be able to catch him at the end of the race but 
catching up a car and overtaking one is are two completely different things. So let's see what he can do. You're right, Sandy. And as you said before, this is not an easy circuit to overtake on, especially not against an experienced driver like Alessandro Giretti. But we have seen now that Kane is doing a 139.1 on the uh, 139.18 on the last lap, and uh, Giretti is doing a 139.15. Very, very consistent driving from both drivers here. It looks like the lap time. Sorry, I look. That was actually uh, the last lap. This lap, it was a 139 dead from Kane Shepard and a 139 one from Alessandro Giretti, which means Kane is within a second of his competitor now. Looks like he's closing the gap a little bit towards the closing stages of this race. So what do you think? Is Kane just following around Alessandro and learning, learning all of his secrets and now he's putting them, uh, putting them uh, put into use? I think he might definitely be able to pick up something, but there's no doubt that he's trying to catch him up and trying to go for the overtake if he can get close enough. And yeah, we see him coming through the final corner, both of them using all of the track available with three laps to go. Three laps to go. We'll get the update of the timing screens in just a moment to tell you what the gap is. But if things uh, follow the status quo, Kane Shepard will be closing in still on his uh, competitor there just in front of him. We can see Moise Mashafer, of course, crossing the finish line just then, and that's the blue car of number 28, uh, Alessandro Giretti, coming through turn four. The cars go quite wide there, almost touching the dirt into turn three. Yeah, these drivers are really maximizing all the track has to offer. Inside some of the curbs, there's quite a lot of dirt where the drivers are just using all, all of the track they can while still being within the track limit regulations. I just saw the update on our timing screens and Kane Shepard is now 7 tenths, well, 0.78 of a second off of Giretti, so he is closing. Last lap he said a 137, uh, 138.7 and uh, Giretti did a 138.9, so the gap is closing. Another two tenths going to be within half a second uh, next lap if he keeps things up, yep. which means in the final lap that's where he's going to have his opportunity, where is he going to make his move? Well, it's difficult. Uh, Kane also has to be careful of the aero wash that he'll experience the closer he gets to Alessandro, so he'll have to plan his move right if he's going to make it stick. So, of course, in Sepang you have the two big heartbreaking corners, 10, 14 and 10, 15 at the end of the track which means uh, you have all the way until the last corner of the last lap to, to make a move, but it's not really an option here to overtake a turn 12. Maybe the last place is turn 9, turn 11 would be an amazing overtaking opportunity, but not really realistic. So where do you think Kane can try? Maybe coming up into turn 2? We could have a look in the next lap into turn 2, or just try to get as close as he can before making a move, perhaps in turn 8 or 9, or maybe even 11 if he's feeling feeling adventurous. So now with two laps to remain, uh, Alessandro Giretti is still the head of the grid and he is still six, uh, well seven tenths uh, ahead of uh, Kane Shepard. Kane closing in about half a tenth that lap doing a 138.9 and Alessandro, sorry, doing a 138.9 and Alessandro doing a 139.01. So uh, Alessandro sees that he's closing in, he's picking up the pace again. Yeah, it could be that Alessandro was just tuning it down a little bit for the middle part of the race to try to save his tires for the next race. We'll have to see after, after we get to speak to him after this session. Further down the grid then we can see that Moise Mashafer is uh, 13 seconds behind the leaders. They have, as we said, built an amazing lead to the, to the middle of the pack and uh, Luke Thompson is just behind. Uh, followed by Alistair Young and Rio Comicado. Coming down now, that looks like turn 8. No, sorry, that's turn. That's coming into turn 10. The big sweeping and a U turn. And Kane, what's he going to do? Is he going to be able to get close enough? Is he going to pick up his lead? But uh, it doesn't look like he's closed the gap this lap. If anything, perhaps the gap is widened. Yeah, looks that way. Looks like Alessandro has answered Kane's lap times. And crossing the start finish line. Let's see if we can update our timing screens now. Uh, not quite yet. In a moment, they'll come up to date. But we see obviously Alessandro is too far ahead for Kane to make a move. And Maurice Mushafa just crossing the start finish line there, ahead of Luke Thompson. And back onto our screens, we can see Alice, uh, excuse me, Alessandro Giretti coming through the kink just before turn four, ahead of Kane Shepard. 
the gap has definitely opened this lap. Yeah, looking back at the timing screen now, we can see it's back up to a one second gap. So Kane's lost three tenths that last lap. Uh, Alessandro did a 138.9 and Kane did a 139.3. That's interesting because it means Alessandro is not speeding up. He's about the same within about a tenth. But uh, Kane is actually slowing down. Yeah, maybe made a mistake or difficult to tell from here. Interesting to note as well that the fastest lap time at the moment is Alessandro Giretti with a 138.713. But uh, Kane Shepard is just behind with a 138.722. So that's seven, uh, eight, nine, nine thousandths of a second difference. Yeah, very, very close and competitive driving from both of these guys to make a lap time so close together. Yeah, as we said before, that's the whole beauty of Formula 4 Southeast Asia. It's an equal championship. You know, the, you can see the two leaders here. They've got identical cars and the same fuel, fuel by Petron, of course. And uh, this is what it comes down to. It's all just about racecraft, you know. Yeah. And we can see, of course, Alessandro Duretti now coming in front of us. And he takes the checkered flag in front of Kane Shepard. Yeah, I'm really happy. I like this track and I win two races for this moment, so it's perfect. And uh, yeah, now for this race I start last, I make cool start and after I win the race, so I'm really happy. Well, with that really folks, we've reached the end of the race, and uh, but it's not the end of the weekend yet. Please be sure to tune back in in a few hours' time at 4.30 uh, for the next race, the final race of the weekend. But for me, uh, Aaron Thompson and... Uh, for me, Sandy Stuvik. Thank you very much, and uh, we hope to see you again soon.